Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. It's finally freaking Friday, and Cinco de Mayo. So hopefully you have a great Cinco de Mayo down here working on the Red Brick House, leaving this afternoon to go back home. So we'll be doing our live stream at the Man Cave. And I've got a lot of work to do this weekend. i got to do some work on the Man Cave and stuff as we get ready for the season and some other things that we have going on and happening. Um, we are, I'm excited. I am so excited. I just wish I had more time to do all the things that I want to do. I want to get my man cave up there set up, try to get the red brick house down here together. So I've got a studio down here so that way I can do all the things that I do. So I won't be broadcasting from my mother-in-law's house or, or my mama's basement. That'll be something of my own. So we can say broadcasting here from our red brick house. You know, that's goals in life. Goals in life and ways of trying to do better. And you got to have dreams. And I definitely have lots of dreams. And I'm trying to put in the work to make them become a reality. One of the things I dreamed about, because I was a former defensive player, defensive lineman, okay? I understand what it's like to be on the defense, you know? And, and getting hit, believe me, getting hit, that's probably half my problem from being hit so many damn times in the head, of how defense wins championships. The Cowboys have always, always had great offenses. But it's when the times when they've had the great defenses to go along with it that we won Super Bowls. And we've had great offenses with the Cowboys, you know, since the, the 90s. But typically we don't have great defense with it as well. 2007, 2008 were probably the time we had great at both and just failed. But Dan Quinn, Here's the question I actually ask you guys, and I pointed this out before. If Dan Quinn, after being defensive coordinator of one of the greatest defenses in the history of football, the Legion of Boom, that defense, you know, as much as people want to say, you know, Russell Wilson is this, that, and the other, that defense, when you got the number one scoring defense, number one in yards, number one in taking the football away, it makes the offense's job a lot easier. It really does. And you don't have to get into shootouts where, you know, you score 38 points and lose a game. They didn't have those kind of problems. And Dan Quinn was that guy. And now coming back with the Cowboys, literally with nowhere to go but up because our defense was so bad in 2020, has turned us around. And now all of a sudden you look and you say, Dan Quinn is truly that defensive guru. Having him being a head coach and actually taking a team, the Atlanta Falcons, to the Super Bowl and failing, you have to wonder, because I've been in this kind of boat before, being the, the head guy who has to do all of the politics and all the answering and all the questions and just kind of overseeing everybody else doing the work, or the guy that's there and actually physically doing the work. See, I've had where I've had 25 people working for me um, and things. For me, you know, we're doing bigger projects and things. It, it, it wasn't the same feel. I like to get my hands dirty, you know. I like to physically rip off, rip, knock down that wall. Because at the end of the day, I look and I say, these hands did that work. And I wonder with Dan Quinn, who seems to have found the right mix with the Cowboys, that he gets what he wants, okay? This is the new and improved Dallas Cowboys. This is the more hands-off where Jerry Jones is not calling down on the field for the plays and things, at least not with Dan Quinn. You have to wonder if Dan Quinn enjoys being that defensive coordinator of working directly with the Micah Parsons and, and basically saying, I'm going to create a Hall of Famer here. I'm going to do what I need to do to support that guy. I'm going to do what I need to to create a smothering defense. And that's exactly what he is doing. And you can see how happy he is. Take a look when he was Atlanta Falcons head coach. He didn't look to see if he had, didn't seem to have that same energy. You get drained. You have to answer to the media and things like that. <clears throat> and you have to wonder if Dan Quinn 
is the next Wade Phillips. Some guys are just better off as coordinators than head coaches. And that's a fact. Norm Turner, great play caller. Not so much as a head coach. But Dan Quinn is that defensive player whisperer. To have taken a linebacker and created one of the great, best weapons in the NFL right now, who now we are evolving him to really become that defensive end, bulking him up and, and teaching him things and supporting him, understanding he's only going to be so good or he can only go so far without us getting those other guys in place. And see, here's the thing. I haven't played it in a while. I have not played it in a while. But this whole spiel by Dan Quinn after the Seattle Seahawks won the Super Bowl when they were talking about his defense is exactly what he is doing here with the Dallas Cowboys. And it's amazing because in this interview, he says fast and physical like three times. That is his mantra. That is his battle cry. We are going to be fast we are going to be physical. We're going to be coming in there like lightning, and we're going to knock you out. Listen to him real quick. Yeah, we knew whatever conditions we're going to come up tonight, we really, uh, one of the main things we want to do is play in our style. And uh, we did that tonight. That was one of the things going in uh, all year long. We're fast, we're physical, and uh, we were real style about how we play. How about that came out tonight? Coach, you <laughs> I certainly hope so. Uh, could be more uh, proud to be part of that unit that, that plays, you know, aggressive style. We talked about out hitting people. In terms out hitting. We want to affect the quarterback and uh, even checking the ball down the way we want to tackle. Uh, we want to win with fundamentals. And, fundamentals. Uh, you know, our guys work really hard in that fashion. Uh, it's something that our coaching staff and players, you know, we talk tackling, we talk turnovers really every day that we practice. And uh, that's what you're going to do. Well, we certainly have uh, you know, so much respect for their offense the way it is. So I was not surprised that we played well. Uh, we've had terrific weeks of practice and preparation. So going into it, we were healthy. We really felt like we were going to play fast and physical. We prepared for no huddle for two weeks. And uh, to get those group of guys two weeks to prepare, uh, the coaches and those players, I think we're going to like the results. What did you tell your players after the game? Really just how proud I was to be part of the unit. And... Uh, thing that I was most impressed about is that we really played in a style and fashion that we're accustomed to. We're fast, we're physical, we play the game on our terms. And that was one of the things we went into the game saying, and for us to go and play it in that way, uh, you know, and have it come true in that way, it was awesome. What are the Seahawks wearing with the old time Seahawks? I'll let you guys decide that. I you know, couldn't be more fired up to be part of our unit and the attitude and the way that we play. So I'll, I'll leave that to you guys. Coach Carroll has been, uh, he's been huge for my career. I think just um, how to feature the players. And uh, let's find what a feature player can do well, and let's accent that. And uh, that will be one of the main things that he's talking about. What did that first one try? Did you anticipate it would be that side? I don't know about that, but I certainly know our guys know how to rush. And uh, that was one of the things we knew when you face a quarterback like him, you better be able to affect him. We didn't talk about sacks or hits. We talked about can we get them off the spot. And uh, we knew in certain coverages there was going to be times when he got the ball out and under 2.2, 2.3, which is hard for a rusher. You know, sometimes it can be it's at 2.6 or 2.7. That's when you can get the hit. So uh, we knew they'd have to deal with us, you know, in terms of, you know, fired up for Clem and what he was able to do. And Cliff and Michael have been doing that for a while. So uh, just another example of how, you know, we have a really deep front. And some games you have to play real hard balls to get a running team. And then there's tonight games like tonight where it's going to be more featured pass rush. What did that thing several times? Dave made it several times. Audible into a run. Like Bobby Wagner was nodding. He came back and made a signal. Did you guys know any of the calls that had signals? We did not. In fact, uh, some of our calls, we just wanted to have some fun. And we made, we made up some calls just so we'd be able to do some too. And see, <clears throat> that interview right there tells you everything you need to know about Dan Quinn. And, and you can see he is implementing exactly that with the Dallas Cowboys. Because he believes, one, in length. He loves guys that are taller, you know, and, and very fast and very, of course, physical. So you look at <clears throat> Micah Parsons on the edge, and he is fast. He is lightning fast. And you see him, and remember uh, in the 
against Tariq Hill. I know it was just kind of like a gimme thing, but you saw his speed versus Tariq Hill in there. Okay, and I don't know that Tariq Hill was really trying that hard, but, but be that as it may, you understand. He is not the slow prodding type. Um, even with Mozzie Smith, Mozzie Smith is <clears throat> a big guy. But for a guy who's that size, he is actually very, very quick. He is strong, and he is truly physical. He talks about being physical. You think about a guy like Damone Clark, who this is going to be his second year. Last year, quietly had 47 tackles, coming back without having any training camp, without having any OTAs, having his back fused about this time last year. That guy is another very, very fast and physical type player. So the Cowboys, <clears throat> they're going to outwork your ass. They're going to be to the point of attack. And when they come, they're going to be coming to knock your block off. And you can see um, with all of the players that they draft, length, speed, physicality. And this defense, teams better start being wary of. Overshown, that's another Dan Quinn type of guy. He wants that linebacker who may end up being that spy to get that running quarterback that can come from the weak side and be able to chase people down. The thing that's so different about this defense and what Dan Quinn instills, and I remember uh, being there at training camp, one of the reasons why maybe I think I'll go back again this year is just watching Dan Quinn. You see the joy of him out on the field there, you know, going between the defensive line, the linebackers and things. He is just like, really, he, he's, 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 he's almost like he wants to get out there and play. You've seen him jump in there, playing nose tackle and stuff in practice. But he's very hands-on in teaching these guys technique. And when you've seen them, like, for example, I remember seeing them doing where they got one down lineman, they've got everybody upright. That's one of those things that when the offensive line sees it, you can shoot the gaps before they have a chance to get wheeled in there. You've got a better sight line on the ball and things. So you see him being this mad scientist where he's using the speed to their advantage. And you see the physicality of the defense where we changed from Rod Marnelli, who was more bend, don't break. You know, we'll give up the small stuff up underneath. We're not going to give up the big plays. That was Rod Marnelli's philosophy. He's an old guy, so he's a little more cautious. That ain't this defense. That ain't your Rod Marnelli defense. This is Dan Quinn. We're going to attack, 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 and come after you and make you feel uncomfortable. And now that Dan Quinn has pretty much turned the page of Rod Marnelli's players, you see him with these fast linebackers. You see him now with bigger defensive linemen, getting the Quentin Bohannons, that's another big body, getting a Hankins, another big body. These are bigger guys than we've typically seen with the Rod Marnelli defense, but they're physical, and for guys that size, it works. You see him getting not only big guys, you see a guy like O.C., O.C. Um, in Adoro, he's more like a Cliff Avril size guy. Cliff Avril was not a huge defensive tackle. Cliff Avril, very muscular, very strong, very quick. That is an O.C. And you look at this defense, it's not only one style of guy. This defense has, we can line up with a heavy package, we can get Hankins out there. We'll be able to get Mozzie out there. We'll be able to get Quentin Bohannon if we want to have, you know, a, a ton of fun, half ton of fun on the defensive line. Or you can get fast guys like O.C. out there that can really put pressure on. So having multiple layers, multiple waves of guys that are going to be able to keep the guys fresh, because that's the key. You will wear out. The offense. The offensive line is not changing. Those guys are playing every snap. But if I can get, you know, 25% from this guy, 50% from that guy, and 25% of that guy, that's three guys that are going against that one guy. He's going to get tired. Real tired. And the biggest thing, I, I still, I'm still in a state of shock. A week after the fact. 
that the Cowboys valued the nose. I still can't believe it. I've been begging for it forever. And so I hope, I hope and pray it all works out. Anyway, I got work to do. Got to get over here to the Red Brick House uh, so we can get this thing together and done. And um, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And um, they need to show more from, I need to do a live stream from the Red Brick House. But I, I forgot to bring my um, tripod holder uh, to have here. I need to just get one and leave it at the house. But I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And I hope you have a great day. And I'll see you tonight at the Man Cave. Peace.